G'day there. So um, we're going to have a wee look at how to handle outliers when you're fitting a model in the level 3 bivariate data standard. And I'm going to be using Insight. Points can easily be removed and restored on Insight. And we're going to do that in a sec. Um, when we see an outlier, this point here, for example, would be an outlier because it lies far away from the general pattern in the data. And so when we see an outlier, we don't automatically delete it. But first we try and find out what it is, why it might be there, and try and understand it a bit. Later when we fit our model, which is what we're going to do here, we need to think about the effect that one point has on the model and whether we want it to have that effect or not. Sometimes you might decide just to fit the model to the rest of the data and not the outlier because you want to describe the pattern and the rest of the data. So what do you do? Well, we're going to work through this example here, which is on page 35 of your workbook. Use the data set CIA life expectancy. Predictive variable is births per woman. Response variable is life expectancy. So let's find a bit about that data set first. So it's for 22 countries. The births per woman figure is the average number of children that would be born per woman if all women lived to the end of their childbearing years and bore children according to a given fertility rate at each age. The total fertility rate is a more direct measure of the level of fertility than the crude birth, weight, birth rate, since it refers to births per woman. This indicator shows the potential for population growth in the country. High rates will also place some limits on the labour force participation rates for women. Large numbers of children born to women indicate large family sizes that might limit the ability of families to feed and educate their children. Life expectancy is just the life expectancy at birth for the population, male and female. So that'll be based on the age at which um, people die, according to the data that's available. And you've always got to remember all these figures are based on only the data that has been collected. And in some countries, not all the data may be accurate or not all the data may be available. So I've imported this data. My response variable is life expectancy. So it goes in variable one. And my predictive variable is births per woman. So that goes in variable two. So the first thing I need to do with the outlier I see there is back when I'm doing my original description of the features of the graph, before I fit my trend, I need to, before I fit my model, I need to actually find out why that point is so far away. So I'm going to go back to my data set to do that. So if I go view data set, and notice that these points are not people, they're countries. So it's the average birth per woman and the average life expectancy in those countries. Some of which have, have a much bigger population than others. So this point down here, I'm looking at one where the birth per woman is just, just over two, but the life expectancy is below 72. An easy way to spot it quickly is to actually sort the data set in order, and I want um, to identify the ones that are low in life expectancy because it's the second lowest. So I'm going to sort by life expectancy. So sort data by variables, and I'm going to go life expectancy and increasing. And so now I've got the bottom three right there and I can see the third one which is the uh, it's the second one the outlier here is the second lowest life expectancy so it's Brazil and um, so I'd be interested in finding out a bit more about what's unique about Brazil and why it wouldn't fit the relationship in the other points another interesting thing here of course is that these other two points with low life expectancy what are they well they're Peru and Mexico if you remove them from the data set which you can go do by going data set and I want to go filter data set and I want to go numeric condition I'm going to get rid of anything that's below 73 years life expectancy so 
it says here choose observations in the data set so I want to actually I want to keep the ones in the data set that have a life expectancy greater than 73 years so if I do that and have to add the variables back again and um, so the relationship is still a downward trend it hasn't changed really the, the, the slope of that relationship or the way I describe it so I don't need to filter them the thing to watch is that sometimes um, it can look like there's a, a downward trend or an upward trend but once you remove a couple of outlying points or, or points a wee way from the rest of the data it can just look like a big clump and there may not be much of a relationship however in this case I'm still happy that there's a negative association between births per woman and life expectancy based on what I see on that graph so I'm going to restore the data set and I wouldn't actually call necessarily those two countries outliers um, based on the fact that they still fit with the negative relationship if we remove um, Peru and Mexico we still see that negative slope however Brazil is definitely an outlier because it doesn't fit with that general slope it's a long way from the points so what I want to do now is when I'm fitting my model I need to try fitting the model with the outlier included and with the outlier excluded and compare the validity that's the appropriateness of my model with the outlier there compared to without the outlier there and I need to write about that so what I'm going to do for a start is I'm going to go with the outlier included I'm going to go add to plot and that looks like a fairly linear relationship so I'm going to go add trend curves and I'm going to go linear and there it is and I'm going to close and get summary so I can get the equation and I'm going to plonk those both into my document I'm typing into so snipping tool and so you can see here the blue lines my linear regression model I've given the graph a title I've said linear model with Brazil included and I've got my equation which is life expectancy as equals about 87 minus about 5.6 times X so the, the gradient is a negative 5.6 correlation which is the um, extent to which the points follow a linear association and it's negative 0 0.81 so that's that's a reasonably strong negative correlation okay so now I'm going to remove Brazil and do the same thing and compare so back to insight and I'm going to go um, data set filter data set and I'm going to remove a particular row number because I've restored the data set everything's back to its old position so I just need to find Brazil and there it is and it's row number 18 so I want to remove row 18 so row number 18 and it says type in the row names of observations that need to be excluded so I'm excluding Brazil excluding Brazil and see Brazil's gone skis so I'm going to add to plot again I'm going to fit a linear regression model because it still looks like a linear relationship and get summary and I'm going to plonk that in beside the other one so that I can compare them so here they are side by side zooming in the effect of removing Brazil let's have a look so notice that the blue line it hasn't changed much but if you look really closely what do you see well without Brazil there I notice that this blue line has is now actually less steep than it was before it starts at the same like in relation to the points in the top left it, it looks in a fairly similar position but notice these three points just in here compared to where they were on the on the old graph so the blue line's now slightly above where it was before at that point and notice down here they were, it was really close to um, Mexico and Peru whereas now you can see a slightly bigger gap so what's happened is the blue lines gradient the blue line swung 
up and to the right a little bit. So its gradient's now less steep. Why do you think that might be? Well, if we if we actually look for some evidence on that too, if we look at the um, the gradient of the equation, when Brazil was still in there, the gradient was of the line was negative five point six, negative five point six one eight. With Brazil excluded, the gradients now are less steep, negative five point three. About um, the linear correlation has got slightly stronger. It went from negative zero point eight one to negative zero point eight eight. That's not a big difference, to be honest, um, but it just means that those points, um, it actually doesn't necessarily mean they're closer to the line, but it means that without Brazil, the remaining points um, follow a stronger linear pattern, whereas before you could say it, was, it wasn't as strong a linear pattern. That's what the R value tells us. Okay, so um, which one's the better model to use? Well, the answer is it actually all depends on the purpose of your investigation. What are you wanting to investigate? If your purpose is to compare, well, to actually look at um, the relationship between births per woman and life expectancy, which one would you go with? Well, I'd be going with the one on the right because that shows us the relationship amongst most countries. You never want your model for prediction purposes to be too heavily influenced by a, by one single situation. Why? Well, when you look at this situation here, we're interested in the relationship between birth per woman and life expectancy for the purpose of predicting life expectancy amongst most countries. In that case, we want to know about most countries. We don't want one a one-off situation to uh, to really affect our predictions too much. There will be other reasons why Brazil is down here. What might those reasons be? Always think about other factors that might be involved. So what might be different in Brazil that might affect either births per woman and or life expectancy? It's not the most impoverished country on that list. Other differences in terms of um, that might affect births per woman. So think about things like contraception and so on. And, um, and that's something you'd want to research. I can think of a couple of ideas already, but I'm going to leave the fun to you to research that one. So what you do in your internal is you'd actually do exactly what I've done here. You would describe how removing Brazil has affected the gradient of the regression line and has affected also the fact that it now is a better fit to the rest of the points. It's a more valid model for describing the relationship between births per woman and life expectancy amongst the rest of the points. This one's been dragged down by Brazil, by one country, and we don't really want that. So I would be revisiting my earlier predictions that I made with my original model, and I'd be now revising them in my internal, using the new model with Brazil excluded, and explaining why I think the model on the right is more valid for the purpose of my investigation. Hopefully, hopefully this is helpful. I'm going to do another one on groupings, fitting models to different groupings. See you later.